Okay, here I have this rather plain looking box, but it was pretty obvious what it is. It's got a ferrite rod antenna on it, a few connections on the back there, and a couple of knobs. And the only thing that caught my attention when I saw this is the knobs, because I actually want them, I think they fit particularly that small one on a Playmaster amp I've got here, which is missing a knob. These were common in the 70s and maybe the 80s, these knobs, but very hard to get these days. But what I found when I actually opened this up, expecting it to maybe be the remains of some commercial tuner since it's got a proper commercial tuner type antenna rod on it, was that what I actually had here is this Wangeen TU7700 board. And I believe these are actually sold in the 70s as so like a pre-built module. And you basically supplied a box and a power supply and everything else and made your own tuner. So I say very plain looking one, not something you'd want as part of your hi-fi system, I guess, but who knows what this was used for. Look at this, it could well have been something commercial, like a music on hold or background music somewhere, somewhere where you would never see it. I mean, it could just be that someone really didn't care what it looked like. It looks like what we've got here is, I assume, one, two, three, that must be a band switch, I would think, or maybe power on and AM, FM or something, unless it's got shortwave or something. But then obviously got a big tuning cap here, and this has got like one of these reduction drive things. So I turned the knob quite quickly, but it's only slowly turning the, the tuning cap. I think they were called a vernier drive or something. I know Dick Smith used to sell these things. So it goes to show what they're actually used for. They're just like a reduction drive for many, many turns of this knob. You only get a slight turn, so obviously fairly fine tuning. Not so much fun when you want to go from one end of the band to the other, but if we were just turning this capacitor directly, it would just, basically I can't probably turn it, but it would just, you know, half a turn or something might flip the whole thing from one end of the range to the other. So we've obviously got a power socket on the back here. Since it's a power type plug, I guess that's left and right channels does have an LED on the front, which may well be a pilot light from the look of it. It comes back to a couple of pads here. Could also just be power. But it seems to have one side going to the positive and the other side comes back into this Hitachi chip here. So that might be a pilot indicator for FM stereo. That's not just across the power rail by the look of it. And yeah, we do have yeah the power there coming into this side of the board. No idea what the voltage is, but this big Catalina brand electrolytic capacitor there is right at 25 at 1000 so if it's 12 volts you'd think they'd only go for a 16 volt capacitor maybe but I'm guessing it's going to be around 12 volts maybe a bit higher 16 maybe 18 even 20 volts and we can see these two banana binding banana plug binding post things coming to a piece of 300 ohm ribbon cable which goes to the front end and the tuning capacitor so obviously that's just our antenna and someone's used a heap of bit of old um, rainbow cable, rainbow ribbon cable to connect all the various connections off the board here to the to the band switching. And I think that's it actually, because it only goes to the band switch. The LED comes back to in separate wires. That has no connections because it's directly mechanically coupled. And we do have what could almost be a Zener diode there. 220 16 volts so yeah maybe there is a sort of possibly a little voltage regulator there of some sort positive comes in yeah through like a that's well, actually a 2k 2 resistor so i'm guessing yeah this this may i assume it's not a voltage regulator no it's a 2sd468 so that's likely to reduce the voltage down from a higher voltage maybe to 12 volts maybe it has its own regulator so i'm not sure what on earth that little thing is that an inductor some little brown thing there two-legged device with some colored dots on it which comes from that zener diode unless it's some sort of i don't think it'd be a resistor but it takes the zener diode back to ground i think oh, good to be able to read what that voltage is on the xenodite or if it's a one in something or other number i can see a two 12 yeah i think it's a 12. 
So we need to maybe go about 16 volts into this thing. Z, just says Z12, I think. That's a pretty dead giveaway that that's a xenodiode plus the way it's located in the circuit. And the next capacitor is 16 volts, which is what you'd expect on a 12 volt rail. So another 16 volter there, which goes. So is that the output of the. Yeah, we've got positive in to the center lead, I guess it's the collector. This would be the emitter, comes to this green wire that goes to the band switch. And does it go to much else than that? Oh, maybe, yeah, that's probably the power, so it probably is a power switch in here then. Quite possibly, so one set of segments from this, yeah, they're wired together, I think, so... Quite likely this switch switches the power to the rest of the circuit. So I think it just comes out of that transistor. There's one resistor and one capacitor, probably goes up this green wire, comes back down... Who knows which wire... And... Powers up the circuit with the 12 volts. So what I thought I might do just before I steal the knobs off this and probably, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, chuck it away, I guess. I don't know what possible use it really has. It is on, um, what is it, the radio archive or whatever it is. I forget what the website's called, but I did find it on there. There's a picture of the box that came in and possibly the instructions for it. Maybe it didn't have the instructions. I think I was hoping the instructions were there. But it came in like a polystyrene box or something. Just the circuit board, I guess, with the instructions. Told you what to do. It looks like there's a, probably an audio driver stage there. But that seems to go back into this orange and red wire. So maybe they're switched as well. So maybe that's, oh, it must be a band switch. I assume this would be AM and FM. I guess the only way to find out is put some power into the thing and hope no smoke comes out. I'm going to go up, yeah, around the 16, 17 volt range there. Black is negative, I assume. Ooh. It's just probably charging the cap. It's sparking a bit there. I'm still sparking a bit, but there. It's only showing about 100 milliamp draw. I guess before I run it at all. I should hook up to these, I assume they're line outputs. Let's see and find out. Uh, we need to go the auxiliary in. Uh, I don't think I've got any 3.5 to RCA cables. I used to have them for a standard sort of thing once upon a time. I've got an adapter. Yeah, what happened there? So it looks like I might, don't have any adapters, only 75 ohm to 3.5 for t little TV antennas. So I guess we're going clip leads. Well, at least we only need one earth, I guess. Uh, where's the volume at? Keep that low, because God knows what's going to come out of this. Now, I think that's the earth. They join together. Yeah, oh, are they? Hang on. Yeah, that would be it, I would assume. That would be one of the channels. At least if I get some hash or something out of this, I know that I'm... Whoops, hitting the earth. Ooh, yeah, there we go. That's the other problem, it's not going to have any volume control, I guess, but it is just a line out. Oh, we go. Ooh, and we have a LED lid, I think. Oh, we did have when I had my hand on it. Oh, is that maybe... FM, yeah, the light's out. Oh, yeah, I can hear it change. That's FM mono, FM stereo. That's obviously AM, so that would be this antenna. 
climbs up there. Yep, that seems to work alright. Hmm. Oh, it seems to work. It's not bad for something from the 70s. I guess I should really hook up both channels just to see. You could even tell in mono that it was going to stereo mode on the radio, just the way the sort of sound widened up a bit. Let's go right back down that other end was the best reception, I think. doing something that Ocean Party and Board Shorts. No, that's all I can pick up. Which is out through Blossom Rot Records. That's a single called Cause You Home. In the middle, from a band who originally hail from Byron Bay, the group put out an acoustic and bedroom recorded album called Angry Young Folk earlier last year. They are known as the Dharma Chain, but if you have ever caught the band live, you would know that their latest single is more of an accurate representation of the group. A big, rhythmic and powerfully dark track. That one's called His Head. A forthcoming album, which is recorded and in shed in the Queensland hinterland, is due out 
place in this year as well. Then we also heard from the Perth-based sport punks of Sweat, who released their debut EP back in June of 2022. And Parking Fine is the name of that track there from the Sweat EP. This is the AMRAP Radio Show. Hope you're having a good time so far. Not long to go. The hour is through, and I'm already sad to say that there's only a couple of tracks for you right now from a Brisbane-based hip-hop artist who brings a big alt-rock sound to an already stadium-ready brand of rap. This is Merv with Wasted. Every time I hmm, so it's got no power switch. Ooh. Shut up, yeah. So it's got no power switch, it's just a AM, FM, FM, mono, FM stereo. And I'm putting about, what is it, 17, 18 volts into it. But yeah, it seems to work pretty well, quite sensitive. As a lot of the early ones were, they're made because I'm in a shit, metal shit at the moment. And it, nothing likes picking up in here much, so it's doing alright to pick up that much. But yeah, that's not a lot of use as is. But what I want is these little grub screw held on knobs. I guess in a way I've got to put them somewhere safe because I'll lose them otherwise. And yeah, they can go back together and continue to be a bit of a novelty. Some nice circuit board standoffs in there I wouldn't mind pinching. Some rubber feet but they're starting to crack and deteriorate. And yeah, I don't know what else I can really do with that. I guess I could pinch the not very useful colours, the binding posts. The rotary switch is on a funny angle. So I think something's a bit bent there. That looks a bit better. Whole front panel's bent I think. Yeah, I didn't didn't really want to pay ten dollars fifty. I think that's what it cost for such a useless thing. But just one of those knobs alone. In the modern world, what would have cost a few dollars back in the the eighties is now damn hard to get. So, and the amp looks terrible, missing its um, one of its knobs. So this served a useful purpose to me. Providing me with that knob. And I thought I might as well just have a quick look because it's not very often you're gonna see one of these things. And I don't think anyone probably cares much about it, but it is an interesting bit of old electronics. I haven't been able to find it in any catalogs or anything so far. There were quite in the 70s quite a few modules around that you could buy pre-built even in the 80s Dick Smith and that used to carry them. I think JK also carried that sort of thing up until fairly recently if they don't, and they may still have something like that so you could get little amp modules and things like this little tuner modules and stuff preamps for microphones and PA amp things and bits and pieces and somewhere here I've got a couple of um, Sinclair the guy who was behind all, what was his first name? I forgot what his first name is, Sir, Sir Richard, Sir Robert, could have been Robert Sinclair, but he put out a few modules in the 70s, I think Dick Smith actually sold some of them, they're in one of their old catalogues, and I do have, I can't remember what I've got, I think I've got another, like a, a rough aluminium box like this, unpainted and all the rest, and that's got a couple of those in it, which will be interesting to look at some stage. I think it might have even had the instruction book that came with the modules. So back in the sort of 70s, um, super expensive in terms of wages to go buying hi-fi equipment and stuff. And like component tuners and stuff, obviously you could buy cheaper little radios and stuff. But to get something like this with actual FM stereo and stuff, not the cheapest. So a lot of people would actually buy modules or build electronic kits and do it themselves because you could save a substantial amount of money because at the end of the day you were just paying someone 
a bunch of ladies in the factory or whatever to spend the same amount of labor labor as you were hand assembling everything because a lot of this stuff was all all wired up you know the, the circuit boards are probably wave soldered but all the connections to them hand soldered i think and probably the wiring harnesses and stuff all cut up by hand so if you didn't have the money up front to buy a fully manufactured unit and pay someone else to assemble it you just bought the pieces and assembled it yourself in your own time and you could save substantial money back in those days so that's why there was all of this sort of home brew whether you just put a module in a box and added the bits and pieces you want and set it up how you want or whether you built the thing from scratch purchase a circuit board or maybe even make your own and source all the parts or buy a kit of the parts already collected together and do it yourself and it was well worth it then of course now you wouldn't even bother trying when you can buy stuff so cheap some people still do it for a bit of fun but you know most of us now you just look at the price of a module pre-built and think why would you bother but anyway that's a bit of retro stuff from the 70s i never had heard of these things before until i saw this one and probably the only one I'll ever see but it's good to know one still exists out there somewhere I guess most of this stuff would have been thrown out it's surprising this one was still around but thankfully it was because I really needed that knob and I can't go to Dick Smith and buy them off the shelf anymore because Dick Smith don't even exist and they haven't stocked them since maybe the 80s so very lucky to get a hold of that you probably could almost make one of these out of aluminium if you really really wanted to waste a bit of time but much easier to, to buy it and I've got a spare big one as well may be handy for something that's another project i'll get onto one day is the old playmaster amp thanks for watching